In this video, I'm going to be walking through how to build the box turtle reef spooler. For the first step, you're going to need the frame right and left, as well as the motor mount. And we're just going to take our pliers here and break off these supports. You can see the little line there. They should come right off, just like that. And next up, you'll want to get your heat inserts out and go ahead and power up your soldering iron. I use a temp of about 190C. You will need five heat inserts for this step. I'm going to go ahead and set them in and get going here. And you want to make all of these heat inserts pretty much flush with the face of the part. Then we'll repeat and do the other side. Okay, that's it for that piece. We're also going to do this piece here. There's really only one place to put it. There's that one. And on this piece, you're going to go in the bottoms here, right where the support was. There's that one. And the same thing on this one. And there we have it. And next up, we're going to do the heat inserts in these little wheel parts. You're going to insert them in here and make them flush with the lip, the recessed lip, if that makes sense. And you're going to need four heat inserts. And just like the last step, make sure the little lip part goes in that way. You've got the large opening facing you. And you do want to be careful on these. Make sure you don't go too far in because if you do, you don't want that brass piece coming through this hole. Okay, there you can see I've got it in. And it's flush with that lip on the inside. And we're just going to repeat that for the other hole and then on this piece. Okay, and I've got all four heat inserts in these parts now. Now take your motor mount piece and we're going to be inserting one of these Bowden couplers in here. Now, your printer may not have had the best bridging like mine. So if that's the case, just come in here and clean that out a little bit. I'm using a diamond file, but you can, you can use whatever you have on hand. Even a small flathead screwdriver would probably work. But just give that a, a good clean out. Make sure there's nothing obstructing the hole. And then I just for good measure, I like to... Kind of rub this out a little bit just to get any roughness out of there and next up we're going to take our coupler make sure you remove the bottom bumper and then you're going to gently place this in the hole just set it in there and then there's a couple options to insert this i like using this jig tool here and the jig tool you're just going to insert it over the top like that and then what you can do is you can just gently pound that with a hammer or with a mallet or you can just try your luck pushing it and I went ahead and used the mallet you want to make sure that the collar there is flush with the part now you're going to need your six by three neodymium magnets and go ahead and grab two and for this step it's a little tricky I'll be I'll admit just go ahead and slide in these magnets in here but before you do that I would recommend putting some super glue in here so super glue can be annoying to work with so go ahead and take your magnet, just like this. Doesn't matter which side's which right now. Just slide it into that hole. And with any luck, it'll fit. And that glue will then hold it in there. Now what we're gonna do is put this other magnet on top. This is a technique I like to use to make sure I get it right. So once this dries a little bit, it won't take long. Just put the other magnet on there. And then we're gonna repeat the process. But we're going to put some glue in here. Just a little tiny bit, about that much, that's all you need. And then your trigger is going to lay over this part like this. So this is how I like to do it. So take your magnet that's already correct orientation and drop it in like this. And then just push it in, that's it. And then eventually this will dry. And when we assemble it later, this will rest on top like that. So that's what you want. If this resists, you got the magnet in wrong, you're probably gonna have to destroy this part and get the magnet out and then reprint it if you got it backwards. So if it's if it's pushing, you'll, you'll know right away. And go ahead and gather an M310 and an MR63ZZ bearing. And for this step, we're just going to come up here and insert the bearing into the slot here and then follow that up with the screw behind it. And then just go ahead and tighten this down until the head is flush. You don't want to overturn this. So wait until it's flush with that plastic part and you'll be good. And then just double check that everything moves and it does. 
Now for this next step, we're going to take an M38 and another bearing. What I recommend here is just putting the bearing on the screw and then taking it, aligning it up to this hole here in the part. And then go ahead and tighten that down. And you also want to make sure you do not overturn this. You don't want to strip it out. And that's what it looks like, fully tightened. You should have a little tiny bit of play in that bearing. And for this step, we're going to take two M3x8s. And we're going to just get them started in these side holes here. Right there. So just get one started. And then you want to leave about three and a half millimeters between the screw head and the body. So right now it's at about five. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that down a little bit more. The bottom of the head is right about three and a half from the ruler here. And then just repeat that for the other side. And there it is completed. Okay, next up we're going to take our gear. Now this is the LDO kit gear. What you'll notice here is it's just too loose. So you can use this, but you're going to need to Put some glue on here to hold it in place. I would just recommend printing your own part and you'll notice it's like really tight. You're going to take your gear with the little collar here on the inside of the jig and then you can um, gently press it but I'm going to go ahead and do what I've been doing and just use a mallet to press that in. And before you start using your mallet uh, make sure that this is as straight as possible. Now the jig will guide this in, but you don't want it going in crooked. Okay, I've got my granite block here, which really helps with this type of work. And then I'm just going to gently hold this at the bottom. I'm going to tap it until I feel resistance. So once you feel resistance, it hit the bottom. And that's about what it should look like. And just make sure your gear is in good shape if it's printed. Make sure there's nothing blocking the gears. And after this step, you're just going to slip on this part and it's pretty loose and it's meant to be that way. Next up is the N20 motor setup. We're just going to take one of these out. It doesn't really matter which one because uh, you're just going to need to keep track of uh, the, the appropriate wire length, at least with the LDO kit. So this is number one. First thing you want to check is how smooth this runs. Mine have no resistance, so I'm not really worried about debris. If you do see debris in this area, in this gearbox area, it's a good idea just to take some IPA, isopropyl alcohol, like this, and just go ahead and flush it down. So you can do that if you're worried about it. It's never a bad idea. And after you do that, just make sure you get a chance to come in and dry it off real good. Once you've cleaned it out, you're going to take this 15 tooth gear and you're going to align it up. There's a D shaft on here. So a flat part of it, and then go ahead and insert that in. Make sure it, it fits, and then what I recommend doing is just push it through here, and you want to push it through all the way. When you're uh, doing the gear, make sure that you use this jig. Just place the motor in with the uh, gear on the shaft here, and the D shaft as I showed. The edge of this gear should hit that plastic part. There we go. So you do want a little bit of the part a little bit of the shaft protruding out of the gear. Grab this cover here. This is the light box. You're also going to want your diffuser, and this should be printed in a clear PETG. And then you're going to want your retainer. And of course, you need your RGB harness with your LED on it. Now these in my kit, these were all the same length, so it doesn't matter which ones you use. They're all the same. Go ahead and take your printed part. Make sure it's oriented correctly. And that should fit right in there. When you flip it over, you should be able to see it. And then this part, when you install this, your wires are going to be coming through where this split is in the channel. And this is going to clip in right like that to where that split is. So the wires will, the LED will sit in there. The wires will come out. I recommend pre-bending these. So just like that. And then go ahead and take your printed part. Make sure this is lined up well. So this does not, this just sort of sits in the, the part here. It doesn't, my, mine at least does not go all the way into the diffuser. And it doesn't need to. 
Now we're just gonna line this up. I like putting in the flat part first. And then once you get that in, make sure you're not pinching any wires. And you should be able to snap it into place. Now you might need the assistance of a screwdriver, like a Allen key. There we go, and it should clip, it should click right in. And then I got the one side clicked. And again, make sure you're not pinching any wires. There we go. Originally I had printed some parts that were just not quite working with this. Um, I was getting a gap here and this part was popping out. So if you happen to run into that problem, just reprint these parts with a little bit higher extrusion multiplier flow. That's what I did with this part and it, it seems to be holding very well now. And before we install the gear into this next part, you're gonna to wanna to take your grease. You can either use grease from the LDO kit and slather it within here, or the manual suggests using super lube, which I happen to have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that, but it really doesn't matter as long as you're using a similar grease. And I just suggest slathering it a good amount there. Take a toothpick and just poke that in and then come around the other side to make sure you get it good here as well. And get that bottom gear too. And then turn it around real good. And then if you want, you can wipe off the excess or just use the toothpick and clean it out. When you're inserting this into the part, there's really only one way it can go in. That's with these two slots here on the top. And there's a little slot in the part where the metal uh, is going to fit. Put that in there, and it should be mounted just like that. I'll take this next part, and there's a little slot here. You're going to slide into that slot, and it should just fit right in. And then hold it like this, and take your M310, insert it in here, and then you should just be able to tighten that into the heat insert in that other part. And before you move on to the next part, we're going to need to zip tie this down. There is a certain way that I recommend doing this. You want to kind of move it up, leaf, and it's causing a problem, you may want to adjust that or re-solder it. So just make sure that you have good clearance and that you're coming up. It really doesn't matter what color zip tie you use, obviously, but I'm going to do red and black to match the wires. And then this is how I insert them. I'm going to just go ahead and get this one tightened down. And I won't completely tighten it yet. And I'll repeat, make sure these are oriented properly when you insert them. And you want this, this head to rest on this side of the part. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time in closing it up. So go ahead and pull that through before you completely tighten it down. All right, that's about where I want it. You can see I've got a pretty narrow gap there. And then tighten these down as much as you can go. And then go ahead and take your scissors and cut these off right at the tip. And next up, you're going to need these MR148ZZ ABEX 7 bearings. You're going to need two. You're also going to need these parts that we used at the very beginning. Depending on how your bridging is, you may have a little bit of slop here. So take your file, just to be safe. Just give it a little bit of a rub. That way none of that's going to get in the way of the bearing. And do that for both parts. Just make It'll make it a little bit easier to insert. And then take your bearing, and on the top side, just insert it in there. Try to get it as even as possible. And then go ahead and just push it on the table. And just use an even pressure. And there you go. It should be flush with the top of this. You should hear a little bit of a click once you get it in there. And then just repeat with this one. Same exact process. That looks good. So now they're nice and flush. Okay, next up I'm going to just dry fit this to make sure I have good clearance. And I do. So double check that you're bottom pieces can fit and that your top is fitting. Once you've confirmed that, we're going to put an M38 
right through here. I recommend going all the way down and then backing off about a full turn because we're going to need to line up the gear in the next step. To line up your gear, you're going to fit it in this way. And you're just going to kind of work it in. And once you insert this in, it should be able to go all the way in. And you should get good alignment here. And then go ahead and tighten this all the way in. And I should have smooth movement here. At this point, I'm just going to dry fit this piece over. Make sure everything lines up and moves, and it does. And now, what we're going to do is fit our light box and our trigger in. So these pieces have to go in here. Go ahead and take your light box piece, and it's gonna the wires are going to fit in that slot like that. Your trigger piece is going to fit right in here, and it's going to snap in. So you see how I have it oriented here? Insert that in. Take your LED wire. Make sure this isn't pinching. And just go ahead, line it up. We're gonna lift, we're gonna pull the trigger out just for a second. And then just get everything inserted. Now you just gotta go ahead and flip this around in the right orientation. So this is gonna fit like that. Make sure your LEDs are not pinched and they're flowing easily, which they are. Let's go ahead and put in an M38 over here in this hole. That way we'll make sure it's nice and tight. Trigger can still move freely. Now we're just going to snap on the light box piece here. There we go. All right, we're all in place. If it's a little tight, you might need to loosen up your screws or adjust this, but you don't want anything rubbing here. And if you do have issues with the trigger here, just go ahead and remove it and double check your screws. More than likely, these screws might need tightened a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think one of mine was a little bit off. Yeah, that's a little bit better now. And also, make sure that your shaft continues to turn well. At this point, we're going to insert the wheel drives. But before we do that, you have to slide on these bearing spacers. And they should go on easy. If they don't go on that easy, then your part's probably over-extruded. You may want to reprint those with a lower EM. So that's what that looks like. Now we're going to insert the wheel drives. And they should go all the way flush to that part. Put them roughly the same orientation. Just go ahead and push them in like that. Make sure you have the proper orientation. This is going to be connecting into the actual wheel. So you want these little bumps on the outside. Now we're going to go ahead and lock these down. So find your machine screws. You're going to use button head M36s if you're using the LDO kit. And I did have to look for mine for a while. They were in a bag called hardware for wheel. So make sure if you're having trouble finding them, that's where they're at. And I'll just go ahead and insert the screw here. And just give it a good turn once you feel it bite into that metal. So you don't want it moving around. You should have free rotation. And these should be spinning and the bar should be spinning with it. You should be able to feel the motion. Now for the wheels themselves, whether they're printed or the LDO ones, they have this little lip on the inside. Make sure that you line that up with the lip on the wheel. And we'll just repeat for this side. Once those are in, just take your wheel and simply twist them on. And you should kind of feel a click or hear a click. Just repeat for this side. Okay, now we're good. That is pretty much the completed part.